um, we'll reset, but um, I'll provisionally appoint the public defender. All right, the next case I have is Edberto Velasquez. Yes, sir. Okay, and um, Mr. Velasquez is wearing the headset, Ms. Romero. Is that how we're procedurally? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. He can hear the interpreter, Your Honor. I'm Judge Epperson. Mr. Uh, Velasquez, I've reviewed the police report. I do not find probable cause for destruction of evidence in count one. I do find probable cause for possession of drug paraphernalia. And your bond on, uh, so on count one, destruction of evidence, ROR. On count two, possession of drug paraphernalia. Um, just a second. Just a moment. No. I don't have money to pay a, a bond. Can we inquire if he would qualify for PTR? Yeah, Mr. Youngblood? Okay, your bond will be $100 on the possession of drug paraphernalia. Public defender is appointed to represent you based on your application. Would you consider our Can you put the microphone that, closer to your mask? The microphone, if you could get it closer. Your, your Honor, would you consider ROR? He's indicated he won't. He doesn't have any money. Uh, setting any sort of financial bond will be tantamount to no bond in Mr. Velasquez's case. Mr. Youngblood, I'm sure I have the documents here somewhere, but why doesn't he qualify for PTR? Um, they, they tried to establish his <laughs> unable to verify his contacts. He, he didn't state any alcohol or drug abuse, but in his history, he does have... Um, He's a non-supervised resident. He has six felonies, eight misdemeanors. That's okay. I'm, uh, respectfully, I'm going to decline the straight PTR. Well, he doesn't you know, qualify, but I mean, I'm not going to ROR him. It'll be a $100 bond. Thank you, sir. I believe that's all of our Spanish interpreter cases. Madam Interpreter, can you inform him he needs to update his registration address upon release? Okay, pues yo estoy en yo, la misma la misma dirección que yo tengo y todo. It's the same address, everything. Okay, that concludes this matter. And is this the only case, Your Honor? Yeah, it is. It's the only other case. I'm okay. But thank you. And enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You're the same. And the next case will await the Creole interpreter. It's Bennett Fertile. He does qualify for a straight PTR, Your Honor. Bennett Fertile? On a domestic battery? Yes, Your Honor. There's no prior. Okay. That's all right. By chance, is Tamar, Tamar Laurent present as one of the uh, victims? I, I don't know who's here. I know in Osceola they gave me a little sheet and tell, it tells me who's there. But I just got cold in here. I wrote the names at the bottom of the page. If you can't um, read my writing, though, Your Honor, it's Tamara Laurent on that one. Yeah, thank you.
young blood. Yes, when you said qualifies, do you mean bond with PPR or just PPR directly? Uh, he qualifies for, uh, well, he uh, meets the criteria for a straight PTR. We did the verifications and he had all the stuff that he needed for that and the charge uh, fits it. So. Okay. Because customarily, and I just have, I'm, I haven't looked at the administrative order, but typically on an Osceola, when it's a bath, bathroom domestic, they will say it um, qualifies for PPR with bond. Am I correct? I noticed that they do that, yeah. But um, we don't. All right. It, it meets the just straight PTR, and there would be an office visit. Uh, he'd have to get a drug test, and they automatically do that when he goes to the office. And uh, if he has a residence or not, it would be next day, which would be on Monday, the first business day, or it would be a week down the road if he does um, have uh, a residence where we verified. Okay. Risk score too, Your Honor, was uh, zero. He had a good risk score. I know we need to put put this on so he can hear. But um, it says you did have contact with the victim. Um, victim contact was made. It says um, it was verified, and this is just a note. They could be there, but at that time, they said they did not plan to attend the virtual appearance. I, I don't see him in there. Yeah, I, I want to keep moving. So, I know you. I, no, let's let's move, and then we'll we'll try this at the end. I know that you said we had two Creole. Other than fertile, is the next one Placide Canes? Is that it? Or okay, all right. So we'll set these two aside, and the next case we'll call up is Tony Williams. Tony Williams. Uh, mental health. Yeah. Mental health. Okay, public defender's office. You want to waive initial appearance? No, Your Honor, if we can call this tomorrow. We're going to come back to him because it's a Creole interpreter. And Lane is also a Creole. So we can ask him also. Yes. Yes. So a mental health, I mean, they're not coming at all. They're in restriction or what? Okay. Okay, so we'll give it another shot tomorrow, I guess. So what they mean by restriction, he's not coming tomorrow either. He's not coming tomorrow? Um, Your Honor, I have a note from the state on Tony Williams. It appears that he has been deemed incompetent to proceed due to an intellectual disability. Um, and that's one of the ones we have that we're resetting for tomorrow. I don't believe he's going to be able to appear based on the information I've been given. Um, so I'm not sure that he'll be here tomorrow. I just wanted to let y'all know. Okay. He was deemed incompetent. Well, I'm not going to adjudicate a competency issue today. I appreciate that information. Um, but I am going to, having reviewed the police report and finding probable cause, he's right now in on a no bond, um, counselor. And I'm going to uh, set a bond at $2,500. And should he make bond, he's not to return to 455 North Garland, the Lynx Terminal, to have no contact with Elder Mazarigos, the named victim. And uh, again, a $2,500 bond, and we won't reset him for tomorrow. He's unavailable for initial appearance. Public defender provisionally appointed, yes, sorry. Okay. Mackenzie Stokes? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Stokes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Based on your application, I'll appoint the public defender to represent you in this matter. I've reviewed the police report. I find probable cause for criminal mischief as well as resisting a law enforcement officer without violence. On the criminal mischief case, 22 CF 9445, bonds $1,000. On the resisting without violence, bond is $500. And your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Sir, thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to, as I said before, I'm going to skip over Malik Fisher. I want to come back to him in the next batch. And I'm going to go to Frankie Bohorquez. Bohorquez. 
Oh, right, me. we're going to come back to him in the second batch. Oh, okay. I needed to okay. take a look at a couple statutes on that. This stack? Okay. Mr. Bohorquez? Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm Judge Epperson. I've reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for trespassing. Um, sir? Mr. Youngblood, in terms of PTR? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, all right, sir, I'm setting your bond in the case at, uh, it's going to remain at $500. You're not to return to the Christian Service Center located at 808 West Central Boulevard. Public Defender's Office uh, is appointed to represent you in this case. And your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you get a $100 bond? I spoke with Mr. Uh, Bojo Perez in the back. He said that he has $100 that he would be able to pay himself. Uh, this would enable him to not use a bondsman, but it would still ensure his presence in court because that's all the money he has. I'll set his bond at 250 instead of 500. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. That's after looking at the history. Michael McCrimmon would be next. Michael McCrimmon. Open cases, Your Honor, and competency on them. So, thank you. Out of state open cases. Mr. McCrimmon. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Judge Epperson. I will appoint the public defender to represent you in this matter. I have reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for battery. Just one moment. Your bond will remain $1,000. You're not to possess or consume any alcoholic beverages. You're not to return to 256 Ivy Lane, that, the food mart at that location. And your next court date will be provided. That's in 22MM5438. Thank you. Danielle Chase. All right. Good afternoon, Ms. Chase. I'm Judge Epperson. Just a moment. You don't qualify for the public defender's office, so if you're going to have an attorney, you would have to hire your own. I have reviewed the police report. I find probable cause for the offense of battery, uh, domestic battery. Just a second. With respect to um, PTR, Mr. Young, she does straight PTR. All right, based on the totality of the circumstances, um, Ms. Chase, you'll be placed on direct pretrial release supervision with some with some special conditions. All right, these are conditions that you must abide by in order to continue to be at large while the case is pending. You're not to possess or consume any alcoholic beverages or go to any bars. You're not to have any contact whatsoever with Tony Chase until further order of the court. I realize that um, that's your mother, correct? All right, no contact with her. And uh, you're not to return to 10195 Ancora Circle. Is that your permanent? That's not your permanent address. No, right. All right. Um, and you have to follow all the rules of the pretrial release program. All right. You can, as a friend of the court, perhaps uh, if you have any questions, he might be able to answer them briefly there. Thank you. Very briefly. She don't give you that. She's out of Defense. Space, so we'll have her call. No, Defense, does she need to retrieve any items? Oh. Retrieve any items. 
No. Okay. Just making sure. Thank you. Turning next to Felicia Brown Williams. One moment. All right. Good afternoon, Ms. Williams. Based on your application, I'm appointing the public defender to represent you. This is counsel standing to your left. I've reviewed the police report. Find probable cause for theft. Um, I know I have the paperwork here, but Mr. Youngblood? Um, yes, she does not qualify. Uh, she does out-of-county um, hold for Osceola also, Your Honor. All right. A lot of other charges. Just a second. Your Honor, Ms. Brown-Williams indicated that she'd be able to afford a $100 bond. The court would consider that. I, okay, based my understanding, on, she's not going anywhere until the Osceola stuff's taken care of. Okay, well, based on the information I have here um, on the uh, cover sheet, uh, the bond's going to go from two hundred and fifty dollars to 1000 So you have a $1,000 bond. You're not to return to the Bath and Body Works located at 2447 East Colonial Drive in Orlando. And the next court date will be provided. Thank you. Yes. Jennifer Lamar. Hey, was it a bad behavior, doctor, Your Honor. They said that they ID'd you. That okay. Yeah, you so she's ahead. unavailable due to behavior. I They're find a waiver of initial right. appearance. We're, hmm? we're on the Lamar matter, which is case 22 MO905. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I do find probable cause for the city ordinance violation. I'll appoint the public defender to represent Ms. Jennifer Lamar. And bond will stay at 250. Jaquita, Your Honor, I'd ask for a lower bond in that case. I'm gonna keep it where it is, but thank you, Jaquita Tarver. Yes. All right. Good afternoon, ma'am. I have reviewed the police report. I find probable cause. The public defender is appointed to represent you in this case. Uh, Mr. Youngblood. Um, it looks like that. Thank you, Your Honor, that uh, they didn't qualify for PTR. They saw the interview. I'm going to check real fast. Give me one second, Your Honor. All right. All right there's a, at some point she health. wasn't interviewed. There's a mental health designation. I don't know if that's. Yeah, the last conviction was disorderly conduct. Um, she heard, and then she has a petty theft and the disorderly only two. Your Honor, she's really worried about coming up with the money to post bond. She has a job at Taco Bell she needs to get to, and children as well. Ours, uh, I think we do PTR. Didn't hear you. I didn't hear you, Mr. Young. Yes, Your Honor. PTR is... is... Ms. Tarver, if I place you on direct pretrial release, are you going to comply with not returning to the Lynx Terminal at 455 North Garland? I promise you, sir. All right. Isn't that the way you get, is that your transportation source? No, no, I, I walk to work. I stay right down the street from my job. All right, I'll place you on pretrial release supervision. You have to follow the rules of PTR, pretrial release, and not return to 455 North Garland, that uh, Lynx terminal. Gotcha. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. So. Ryan Grant. This appears to me to be a case. He's arrested on a warrant, right? All right. Um, Mr. Grant, I'm Judge Epperson. Good afternoon. Huh. Your, Your Honor? Yes, sir. He came in with that PTR on there, but because of the nature of the charge, that's the one that we're unable to do because he had him in order. So. It couldn't be, he does not uh, meet the PTR criteria. All right, Mr. Grant, I will appoint the public defender to represent you in this matter. Uh, you, you've been arrested on a warrant for child abuse without great bodily harm. And 
I don't have the benefit of the affidavit that was reviewed by the court who issued the warrant. It says pretrial release on the warrant, though, right? Let's see. Well, if I'm reading this correctly, the court that issued the, the, the KPS or the warrant indicated pretrial release upon arrest, if, uh, unless I'm reading that incorrectly. Yeah, these set because of the PTR with the child abuse doesn't, we can't, we couldn't do it, so he was set for to not being able to release him on the PTR when we first saw that. Well, I'm going to set a bond. I'm sorry? Okay. Um, victim? Ma'am, uh, I'm Judge Epperson. Good afternoon. Can you please state your name? Mariah Dan. Grant? Mariah Dan. I'm his ex-wife. Okay. Give me one moment. She's listed as a victim, Your Honor. Okay. What I, is your age? I'm uh, 31. This is for, uh, I'm here for my son. Okay, just a second. Our son. All right, I've now had an opportunity to review the, um, the probable cause affidavit. Um, what would you like to say today, ma'am? Um, that I think he was arrested wrongly. Um, I don't know. We didn't even know that he had a warrant out for his arrest for what happened. Um, and he was doing the right thing yesterday by calling the police to get a psycho ex-girlfriend out of his premises to allow our child to go over there to his house safely. So he was doing the right thing as a father by calling the police and he was wrongfully arrested last night. Ms. Tyner, do you have any questions of um, um, the witness? I don't have any questions. I don't have any charges for that. I just have that he was picked up on the warrant and I can't, there's nothing I can do with that. All right, any questions? For yeah, briefly, uh, hi ma'am, thank you for coming down. To my understanding, uh, DCF out of Apopka has already investigated the child abuse mm -hmm. claims? Yes. Okay, and then that case has already been resolved with DCF, right? It's been resolved since the end of last year, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a contact with the detective or anything, so I didn't know what was going on, and I was under the assumption he didn't either, and I was told this morning that the detective, um, I guess, submitted in February mm -hmm. for a warrant um, out of nowhere. Okay. Um, as far as bonds concerned, do you guys share finances? Yes. Would you be side. assisting in any financial bond that gets set today? I could, but it would be a burden to my household. Um, but I'd be able to take him home. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I have a redaction here, which I understand why they're redacted for the public's uh, viewing. I'm just trying to get the name of the um, the child. It starts with a K. The name of the Hi Grant. Say it again. Hi K A I. K A I.
what's uh, before the arrest? What was the present? What was the living arrangement concerning yourself and um, Ryan? We have split households. We have fifty fifty custody of our son. All right, based upon the limited information I have, um, I'm going to set a bond in the amount of $250. Mr. Grant, until further order of the court, and you can talk to your lawyer about seeking any adjustments, but until further order of the court, you're to have no unsupervised contact with Kai Grant. All right. And also... Actually, that's going to be the only order. You're to have no unsupervised contact with Kai Grant, and your next court date will be provided. Thank your you. Your Honor, just for their records, I do have that there was a KPS issued for this individual on February 25th of 2022. So, that's this one, right? Yes, that's this one, but I just wanted to let them know that might be what this is from, um, so maybe get in touch with the state on that. Right. And is that PTR or just a straight bond? Straight bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, ex I'm exclusively imposing the um, what I what I announced, which is no unsupervised contact. Yeah, and those those can be removed. Don't. They'll charge you a hundred bucks. Yes, other than that one. Yeah, no unsupervised contact. Okay, uh, Brittany Brits. To release things of property. All right, is this Mr. Joel Nieves? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'm Judge Epperson. Good morning or good afternoon. Mr. Nieves, you're the name victim in the case, so you have the right to be briefly uh, be heard today. Today is not the day where the uh, parties uh, talk about the facts of what happened, but the court will be considering bond and conditions of release, and so information that you might have that's relevant on that, such as whether you have any fear, whether you want to have any contact, those things. So what did you want to say today? Uh, Your Honor, she was recently released. Uh, she came to my residence in order, what I thought was to collect her personal effects. She refused to leave. I don't feel safe with her in my domicile, and I, I didn't want to have any contact with her at all. All right. Any questions, State? Um, just briefly, do the two of you live together? She lived with me. I had to take care of everything previously because she went to jail for three months and then since then I, I haven't had any contact whatsoever okay and you're not seeking contact today no no further questions your honor any questions from the defense no your honor All right. moment. Okay, Ms. Brits, I'm setting your bond at $500 uh, subject to the following conditions. Ms. Ms. Brits, don't interrupt me. All right. Just a moment. I want you to pay attention. All right. Your bond is $500. Should you make bond, you're not to have any contact with Mr. Joel Nieves. You're not to return to the Solano Apartments at 2309 North Bumby. Do you have personal belongings there still? He threw them all away. I have to be able to work. He threw away all my makeup. He threw away my heels. His dog destroyed my personal effects. That's what caused the problems in the first place. Okay, I want you to answer my question, though. Do you, do you still have personal belongings there? Yes. What, what what type of things? My purse and my shoes and some clothing items. Okay, you're not to return to that location with this exception. I would grant a one-time return with the assistance of the sheriff's office for acquiring personal belongings such as clothing, toiletries, or any items for work. Other than that, you're not to return. And if you have any questions, I'm going to let you direct them to your lawyer and he can determine whether or not... He, he can advise you whether he wants you to direct those to the court. So I'll give you a second right there to ask your lawyer. Your Honor, she does meet straight PTR criteria too, if you would like. 
go home and play with the women. Yeah. 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 would you consider a non-monetary release? In this case, she indicated she has no finances or ability to meet a financial bond. Ms. Britz, if you're placed on direct pretrial release, you can assure the court you're not going to return to Solano Apartments other than with the exception I made. Did you understand? I've ordered that you not go back to Solano Apartments. Are you going to abide by that? I can't hear you. All right, I'm going to maintain the order that I've issued, which is a $500 bond. All right. I can, I can assure you. We're going to move on to the next case now. All right. Ariel Nicholas. Thank you. All right. So he won't be available for tomorrow. So, so I'm confused. What am I doing? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. <sighs> Okay, so I've been advised that Ariel Nicholas is not available and won't be available for IAs tomorrow. I, I, I just don't encounter this in Osceola. I don't. <laughs> or tomorrow? Yeah, and Ariel Nicholas, um, he's in, it's mental health, but you don't believe he'll be available for IAs tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, the, the, these people need to be brought to initial appearance. Um, so let's reset him for tomorrow. I mean, not that I enjoy increasing my Sunday IAs. We've set him about four or five more, but let's give it a, I'd like for him to be brought tomorrow. Frank Wisdo. All right, uh, Mr. Wisdo, I'm Judge Epperson. Good afternoon. Just a moment. I don't have any paperwork here concerning um, public defender appointments, such as resources. Can you afford to hire your own lawyer? I have. I, I was trying to get in touch with my attorney last night, but he was asleep when I got here. And then my wife, Zoya Solvieva, I contacted her. She was going to reach out to John Gidry. Okay. But I haven't spoken with him earlier, so but he is my attorney. Okay. Well, you've been arrested on a warrant for which a court has already found probable cause. And that is for the offense of battery domestic violence. Just one moment. Now, this is an incident that allegedly occurred back in September of last year, back in September 15th of 2021, I believe. Um, Mr. Youngblood, any insight as to PTR? Yes, he does qualify for straight PTR, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Wisdo, um, you'll be placed on pretrial release supervision. You have to follow all of the rules of the pretrial release program and also these special conditions. You're to have no contact with Ms. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you Ms. Zoya Solovieva? Yes. You probably, uh, let me have you state your name for the record. My name is Zoya Solovieva. I'm Frank's wife. Okay. You have the right to be heard today. The court will be determining bond and conditions of release. Is there something you'd like to say? Um, that incident, it was, um, I mean, sometimes we do get angry and it, I, Frank is not a dangerous person. He hasn't like hit me, hit me. Like, like it was just like, we're totally fine now. He is not a danger. Like we love each other. So like, I really feel bad that he's arrested. I wish I could undo it, but oh, I can't. So I really hope that he will get out. Ms. Tyner, any questions? Just briefly, are you seeking contact with your husband today? Yes. Um, are you afraid of him? No. And if anything, I know you said everything's good now, but if yes. anything were to happen, would you? Nothing be, will happen. Would you be able to call nine one one if something did happen? Though, would you be willing and able to do of that? Of course, of course I would, but that will not happen. I understand. I Thank just, you so much. I just have to ask. No further questions, no. Your Honor. Any questions from the defense? No, Your Honor. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Wisdo. Thank um, you. 
you'll be placed on pretrial release supervision with these conditions added. You're to have no hostile contact with Ms. Zoya Solieva. No hostile contact obviously prohibits any acts of violence, but also any threats of violence or any acts of intimidation. You're not to possess it until further order of, the order of the court. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms, and your next court date will be provided. All right, thank you. Your Honor, the public defender was not appointed, correct? Not appointed, thank correct. You. Thank you. Christopher Bailey. How are you doing, Your Honor? I'm doing fine. Thank you. I'm Judge Epperson. I have reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for grand theft of a motor vehicle as well as driving while license suspended. The public defender's office will be appointed to represent you, so you have legal counsel. Um, I'm setting bond. I'm going to maintain your bonds at $1,000 on the grand theft motor vehicle and $500 on the driving while license suspended. And your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Thank you. Lavivia Blanding. Sir. All right, uh, Ms. Blanding, I will appoint the public defender to represent you in this matter. I've reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for the offense of possession of cocaine. Um, any uh, any input from PTR? Um, would you like to know her history? No, no PTR for. for uh, so what? Okay. afford for bond? All right, uh, Ms. Blanding, I'm setting bond at five hundred dollars. Should you make bond, you're not to possess, ingest, or consume any illegal substances or any controlled substances without a prescription. Next court date will be provided. Honor, she indicated she can't afford a financial bond. Would the court consider terms of release? Uh, checking in with her public defender every two weeks, anything like that that would PTR. allow her to get out? You don't um, think that's a PTR? Based on the information, the limited information I have, I'm setting it at 500, which I essentially cut it in half. I think the thank standard you, was 1,000. All right, thank you. Robert Chirico is next, I believe. All right, Mr. Chirico, I will appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. I have reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for aggravated assault, battery, and criminal mischief. Your bonds are going to remain as they've been set, which is 500 on the battery, 500 on the criminal mischief, and 3,500 on the ag assault. You're to have no contact with William Sloan. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. And I know I've given bond, but can that also be supervised by pretrial release? Uh, because of the nature of the charges, no. Uh, the conspiracy to commit aggravated assault, the aggravated part of All right. All right, sir. Those are the conditions of, of your release should you make bond. Your next court date will be provided. Thank you. I, I don't get this. What? I don't understand. The, the man. The man. Got it. Your Honor, would you consider lowering the bond? In this case, just at this point in time, it's he said, she said, I understand the court's concern, but there is no actual evidence uh, other than what came from the parties themselves. I do recognize that there's a third party involved in this case, but that third party was tied to the alleged victim. To my understanding, there were a couple. Um, in light of all that, we'd be asking for a lower bond amount, Judge. Let's see. Bonds, uh, the only change I'll make is the ag assault will be a $2,500 bond, and the other two will remain at $500. Same conditions of release, though. All right, thank you. Thank you, Judge. Antonio Delgado Coelho. Refused, Your Honor. Refused, all right. He was arrested on a warrant. Uh, the court just needs to consider bond on the fleeing and eluding, but since he refused, uh, it'll just stay as they've been said in the warrant. All right, and uh, those are a matter of record. So it's waived, and his court date will be received in the public defender's office. I don't have any information, so I'm not going to appoint the public defender. Your Honor, he'll sit in jail. I yes, he will. think he needs to get an attorney. Yeah, he probably does, but I just don't have any. I'll make a provisional appointment of the public defender's office. I didn't have any documentation from him. Perhaps he didn't choose to fill it out. 
He has a remand, Your Honor, and he has about eight or nine other charges that he's in on. Okay. okay. Are they pending with us? Our system's down today, so. Yeah, he has a lot of charges, so. Um, we're appointed on one. It, I didn't see it. it. It hadn't been in there yet. Um, it wasn't put in there. With the remand, they wouldn't, you wouldn't go through, so. Got it. Okay, so I'm making a provisional appointment of the public defender. He'll need to fill out an application. All right, uh, Janatha Diaz. Refused also. Refused. Okay. Well, he's waived initial appearance by refusing. I did find probable cause for the grand theft as well as the driving while license suspended. His bond will remain 1000 on the grand theft motor vehicle, and it'll remain 2500 on the driving while license revoked as a habitual traffic offender. And his next court date uh, will be provided. And I don't have any documentation here to see if he qualifies for the public defender. So I'll not make the appointment. Your Honor, if two things, if we could be provisionally appointed, he's going to sit in jail again. And yeah, that's um, I, if that is the case, I think that he should be entitled to his initial appearance so he can have the public defender appointed. He's entitled to an initial appearance, but he has to come to it. Correct, Your Honor. As far as their labeling of refused, I just watched one in there where someone apparently rolled their eyes and it was considered a refusal. They ripped her back downstairs. So, like, to say that Mr. Diaz refused to come here. Do we have any additional information on the basis for the refusal? Uh, you know, they just don't want to come to court, so probably they're going to refuse tomorrow. Jury said it. All right. Well, counsel's claiming that someone was not brought to court because they rolled their eyes and perhaps that engendered some frustration uh, with the deputy. That was a female. How can they say refuse? Okay. All right. Okay. Well, the bottom line, I'll make a provisional appointment of the public defender's office and the defendant will have to submit an application. All right. Um, I have now gone through uh, what I've reviewed. I know that we held off on Malik Fisher because I need to take a look at um, a couple of statutes. Yeah. Creole, if we have those in available, we'll do those. So these will be, um, i tell you what, maybe before we rustle them up. We'll get the interpreter on the line first to make sure they're ready to go. But it's uh, Bennett, Fertile, and Placide Claims. Donaldson. He's probably next in line that I haven't reviewed, I'm guessing. Yeah. Another one. John Doe is mental health. Yeah, well, I'm going to hang around here to see if we can get the Creole interpreter for fertile and claims.
one that I did not did not use. So PTR would be the person. PTR. Who did. What about PTR? Yeah, he, he does need to be there. He did. Come about fertile? Okay. Based on yeah, based on the facts uh, that are alleged, I won't. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So this is going to come over the speaker. All right, is our interpreter there? Yes, Judge. Okay, if you could if state your name. Then I will be your interpreter. I can barely hear you. My name is Sebastian, and, I'll be, and I'm the interpreter. Okay, if you could please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully translate from English to Creole and Creole to English to the best of your ability? So help you, God. I do. Okay. And again, I hear you, but it is faint. So if there's any uh, means by which you can amplify your voice a little bit, that would be helpful. Okay. Can, is that better? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll begin now. Mr. Uh, Bennett Fertile is before the court. Mr. Fertile, I'm Judge Epperson. And uh, I'll introduce myself to Mr. Bennett. Bonjour, nom c'est Sébastien, ma pète après tout. Donc, je vous dis à nous dans le tribunal là et nous gagnons nous devant uh, Juge uh, Hopperson. Okay? okay? Mr. Fertile, I'm going to make a provisional appointment of the Public Defender's Office. So you have an attorney standing to your left today to help. Donc, euh, M. Bennett, nous pourrons faire une nomination provisoire et pour aujourd'hui, et où il y a un avocat qui est à gauche ou qui est là pour vous présenter. J'ai revu le police report et j'ai trouvé une probable cause pour batterie domestique de violence. Et moi, j'ai révisé les documents, ok? Et moi, j'ai révisé tout le bagage et moi, j'ai vu qu'il y a des causes probables pour et, et violence, ok? Batterie et violence. Notwithstanding qualification for direct PTR, I'm going to set a bond in your case in the amount of $1,000. Ok, donc, ou gain et nous pral, ou pral gain pour payer et des pénalités et pour, de, pour un montant de $1,000. Ok? If, if you make bond, it will be supervised by pretrial release with the following conditions. Et si ou réussi et payé et montant ça et ça pour gagner des conditions qui appliquer et à et libération conditionnelle là, OK? You're to have no contact with Miss Tamer Laurent. Et ou pas gain droit gain contact avec madame Laurent. You're not to return to 4813 O'Keefe Street in Orlando. Et ou pas gain droit retourner et l'an 4813 et rue O'Keefe en Orlando. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Et ou pas gain droit posséder aucun zam ou et bon, homme blanche ou bien et zam. Your next court date will be provided. Et prochain et date tribunal là, il y a Baouli, ok? Il y a pour qu'on ait qui le lapier. Thank you. Merci. Ok. Your Honor, bond de MPTR? Yes, bond with pretrial release supervision. Thank you. Let's see. 
Okay, we have one more matter uh, for our uh, Creole interpreter, and this is Claines okay. Placide. Yes. And you said Mr. that the name of the person is Clint? Yes, that is the name of the person. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, doc, prochain dossier, c'est pour Clem Placide. Mr. Placide, I'm going to make a provisional appointment of the public defender's office to assist you today. Donc, M. Placide, nous pouvons faire une recommandation provisoire avec le représentant, avec le défenseur, pour assister aujourd'hui. I'm Judge Epperson. I've reviewed the police report and I find probable cause for battery. Et moi-même, moi, c'est Judge Epperson et moi, j'ai révisé le dossier, OK? Et moi, ouais, et que, et, il y a de, il y a cause de, de, de violence, OK? One moment. I'm setting bond in the amount of $500. Should you make bond? You're to have no contact with Ms. Jennifer Cesar. Donc, eh, ou gain pour payer, ou gain caution pour payer pour si un montant de 500 dollars. Et si ou payer caution ça, ou pas gain droit, gain aucun eh, contact avec Madame Jennifer. You're not to return to 1253 Viscaya Lake Road. Donc, eh, ou pas gain droit retourner et. Eh, L'an 1253 Viscaya et Lake Road. If you have personal belongings there, such as clothing, toiletries, or items for work, you can return one time with the assistance of the sheriff's office. Et si jamais qu'on gagne de biens personnels, qu'on courade et bagaille pour toilette, pour pour toilette et bagaille pour pour travail, donc on gagne droit à soulier en un seul fois pour aller récupérer au mais en présence de un shérif. You must not possess any weapons or firearms. Et vous n'avez pas droit pour ces des armes ni armes blanches. One moment. I see there's a couple of cases for which the defendant is on bond. One moment. Ok, bon, une minute. State have any position on the question of whether bond should be revoked? Um, the charges he's out on bond for were driving related. If your honor decides to give him a, a new um, new bond in those cases, we would just ask that a condition be no driving. I was waiting for the translation. Oh, sorry, Judge. Uh, can you please repeat that? Well, it was the state. If you could uh, maybe succinctly repeat that into the microphone so it can be heard clearly by the interpreter. The charges that the defendant is out on are driving related. If the judge decides to um, give a new bond for those cases, we would ask that a condition be no driving. Okay, so the other dossier is a dossier for conduit for permis de conduire là et qu'on a ces juges là qui peuvent décider qui pénalité qui peut le gagner qui condition que peut le gagner et nous même nous demander que condition c'est que ou pas gagner nous pas gagner doit conduire ok defense counsel I would just be asking the court not to take any action on the out on bond cases given the this different set of circumstances um, the allegations in this case indicate that Mr Placide uh, Placide had no intent to hurt her uh, it was throwing on the bed, and nothing further than that, Your Honor. Okay. Donc, moi-même, moi m'a dit que action que pas gain de action qui prend parce que gain de l'autre facteur qui rentre dans le dossier hein, et que Monsieur Placide pas de aucune intention pour te et pour faire personne mal. Ok, et c'est ça que nous-même nous t'amendé que pas gain et action qui prend. Given the totality of circumstances, I'll forego taking action on those two matters. Our next court date will be provided. Okay, and we may we will take an action par rapport à deux dossiers ça y est. Et prochain date de qu'on va pour présenter dans le tribunal là, il y a pas il y a baoulé. 
And that concludes this hearing. Okay. Donc, et ça conclut l'audience. Thank you to our interpreter. And I have a question. Okay. Oui, oui. Does that mean that I get to? Will I be free today, or do I still have, I have, do I have to pay the bond? I provided a bond amount, so you can bond out of jail if you're able. Non, moi by en caution et caution de déjà by montant. Donc si ou capé caution, donc on va sortir en prison. Thank you. Merci. All right. Um, this is the interpreter. Will that be all for today? Yes. Thank you so much for your services. We'll go ahead and excuse. Okay. Thank you for using our services and have a good day. Bye bye. Okay. And we're, we're going to go ahead and. Um, we're done, right? Hold on. All right. Uh, case 22 CF 9314. Uh, Mr. Malik Fisher, Malik Fisher. Um, I'm going to make a provisional appointment of the public defender's office. You can stay seated. Um, you can stay. Oh, that's fine. Okay, you can. All right. Uh, I believe this IA has been reset a number of times, and um, I've reviewed the report. Does either the state or defense wish to be heard, um, Ms. Tyner? Um, yes, Your Honor. The state is asking that we, that Mr. Fisher be held on no bond given the nature of the charges. Defense. Your Honor, we'd be asking for a reasonable monetary bond in this case. Um, he's presumed innocent until proven guilty. He should be allowed to uh, assist in the prepare, preparation of his defense by being released. Uh, at this point in time, all we have is hearsay testimony in the arrest affidavit. Uh, Mr. Fisher's injuries indicate that he was injured by the alleged victim in this case. That indicates to me that this was potential for self-defense. Um, nothing further than that, Your Honor. All right. Um, I understand your point, counsel, that there there's some information contained in the court file that certainly is indicative of the fact that there were gunshots going both ways at some point. Based on the sworn affidavit, though, that um, describes uh, witnesses testifying that the defendant ran up to the driver's side window of the victim's vehicle and fired the first shot, uh, having breached the half-open driver's side window, the court finds under 782.04 subsection 20 probable cause uh, for uh, felony murder, which is murder in the first degree. Um, that subsection indicates that if someone is in the course of committing an attempted murder and that results uh, in, ultimately results in a death, then felony murder is established. And I find there's sufficient probable cause for that, notwithstanding what you've indicated, that there may be defenses that are viable to be pursued. Um, I'm not going to hold a hearing today to determine whether the proof of guilt is evident presumption is great. Uh, but based upon the nature of the charge involving the use of a firearm, the defendant will be held on zero bond on felony murder, and the next court date will be provided. All right, thank you, sir. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Let's see. Your Honor, the defense would ask that no actions be taken on that. It's not filed on. 22 CF 7542 grand theft of a firearm uh, by, or no, grand theft of a motor vehicle in possession of a firearm by convicted felon. Is that it? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, state, uh, has the state not formally filed on that? I'll check. I'm not sure. I think it might still be within the 33 days. Well, there was an initial appearance and a court found probable cause, right? Uh, yes, if he's. Got a bond. I, would. I am going to go ahead and revoke bond on 22 CF 7542. Bond will be zero at this time. Public defender will be appointed on that as well. All right. Thank you. Well, then don't talk to anyone but your lawyer, okay? Don't talk on the phones. 
All right, John Doe, person designated as John Doe. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's it. He's meant to go. He's not behaving. He's not behaving in the cell. And he's respiratory. And he's respiratory, uh, respiratory um, precaution too. Yeah. Okay. Your Honor, is that booking number that's zero one eight 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 nine? Only they can answer that. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Could I have a name for him if they are, if they want him listed that way? Okay, I'm referring to John Doe, case 22 CF 9448. This is the individual who's unavailable. I have a name for him, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Osvaldo is the first name, O-S-V-A-L-D-O. -O. Last name, and it's put together, it's two of them, it's Quinones Rosario. Okay, the defendant is unavailable, and there were two reasons given. One, he has a respiratory issue, and the other one, was it behavior? Behavior, yeah, yeah. All right, um, and could you be more particular? What do you mean by behavior? That, uh, that, this is the inmate that not acting right. If we're trying to go in the cell, we want to end it in a use of force for them for just driving him out of the cell. Okay. Yeah. I find that by his conduct, the defendant's waived initial appearance. I have reviewed the police report. Um, I find, just a second here. As to 22 CF 9448, I find no probable cause. Um, state, unless you have an additional information, all I have is a two sentences on that one. Do you have any additional information? Um, I will make sure I have not been emailed anything, but I don't believe so. And we would be asking for a 24-hour reset to establish probable cause. I will give 24 hours uh, the state to supplement the record in 22 CF 9448. With respect to 22 CF 9449, I do find probable cause for burglary of a dwelling as well as grand theft. Setting his bond on the burglary of a dwelling in the amount of uh, $10,000. It will remain 1000 on grand theft, defendant not to return to White Rapids Drive. And the next court dates will be provided. All right. If we're going to roll this till tomorrow, can we roll both of the cases? I'm not rolling them till tomorrow. Um, I'm finding he's uh, waived his initial appearance by rendering himself unavailable. Okay. Your Honor, is the public defender appointed? Yes. Public defender will be appointed in each. I would ask that the bond be lowered significantly from the $10,000. While this is a burglar, burglary occupied dwelling, the facts don't support such a high a bond amount. Uh, I believe the allegation is, I, I wrote no intent as far as probable cause issues in this case, Your Honor, because I don't know what intent they're going to rely on to establish the burglary. Maybe that he stole the ring camera possibly is hinted at in the arrest affidavit, but other than that. There's no information related to the burglary. Well, the burglary would be predicated upon the fact that he stole the camera according to a probable cause standard. The camera was not found and he was observed to be t damaging it. Right. So but he's on the curtilage of the property. That, that's fine, Your Honor. And I'm saying that, sure, there's probable cause, but I'm saying can we lower the bond amount? This isn't $10,000. This is clearly a mental health issue. I think it's supported by staff here saying he's having mental health issues. Okay. Doesn't make sense. Someone walks up. I'm going to stick with my ruling. You can file a motion and it can be further considered. All right. Kyle Donaldson. 24 hours. I'm giving them 24 hours to supplement the record so I can make a probable cause finding, but he's waived his initial appearance, so he doesn't need to be brought up. We'll address it to see if the state has supplemental information. Your Honor, since he's going to be held on this other case, I would not. There's no objection. Mm. No objection to ROR on that no one? No objection to ROR on the other charges since he's got such a substantial bond on this. Okay. Um, if the state's not seeking 24 hours, then I'll ROR him on the aforementioned case, which was 22 CF. And that would mean there's not a finding of probable cause, correct, Your Honor? That's correct on those on on that case number. Yes. All right, Mr. Donaldson. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. I'm Judge Epperson. I will appoint the public defender to represent you in this matter. You've been arrested on a warrant, so a court already found probable cause for possession of methamphetamine. Back 
in the date of the offense in the um, warrant predates the date the defendant bonded on the cases that are referenced. So there's not a basis to revoke bond. I believe he bonded in July on each of those. Um, so the bond will remain, uh, the bond will be $1,000 in 22 CF 8747. The court will take no action on the other two matters because of that. Mr. Donaldson, if you make bond, you're not to possess, ingest, or consume any illegal substances or any controlled substances without a prescription. Yes. All right, thank you. Public defender's been appointed. All right, Javier Fernandez. Yes. Hello, Mr. Fernandez. Been arrested on a warrant. A court has already determined probable cause for robbery with a firearm and grand theft. Uh, robbery with a firearm is an offense which is punishable by life. Um, I'm not. Uh, you'll remain in zero bond on the robbery with a firearm. On the grand theft case, I'm going to set your bond at ten thousand dollars, and you're to have no contact with the alleged victim in the case uh, referenced in the police report. I don't have a name. <laughs> but no contact with the victim as alleged in the affidavit. Your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Correct. No bond count one, 10,000 count two. Yeah. Correct. Yes. M Michael Flowers. How are you doing, Your Honor? I'm doing fine. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. I will appoint the public defender to represent you based on your application. And a court has already found probable cause for uh, theft. Yes, sir. And set bond at $1,000. You're not to return to the Lowe's located at 1651 North Orange Blossom Trail. And your next court date will be provided. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What? All right. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Terrace Haynes. Okay, is that five sixty a week? Uh, I'm talking about your application. Uh, five sixty a week income. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. That's right. No dependents. Yeah, well, there's a line. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, unfortunately, you don't quite qualify for the public defender's office. For purposes of today's hearing, I'll go ahead and make a provisional appointment, but you don't qualify, so um, uh, you can have some assistance today if counsel... Mr. Haynes indicated he has one dependent, so I think that that should... You have one dependent? Yes. Can I don't mean this, yes. I don't mean this in, insulting, in an insulting way. I just need to know this. You're able to read and write? Yes, sir. Why did you write zero dependents on your application? Oh no, oh no, sir. Did someone fill it out for you? Okay, you have a you have a child or someone who relies on you for income? Yeah, I have a daughter. Is she grown? Okay, how old is she? Uh, twenty-two. Okay, she doesn't rely on you for financial support. Sometimes. I don't know what that means. Sometimes. All right. All right, you're going to have to hire your own attorney if you're going to be represented. You have the right to counsel, but not one appointed at public expense. Yes, sir. Um, just a second. Having reviewed the police report, I do find probable cause for the offense of aggravated assault. And Mr. Youngblood, history? Uh, yes. Um, prior D DOC history released 2010. Three felonies, four misdemeanors, and his history. Last conviction was 1029-12, felon manufacturing delivery of controlled substance. Um, has a sexual offender that's not currently supervised. Okay. There's actually two cases. Um, Yeah, the court finds probable cause for aggravated assault in each case. 
Uh, your bond on 22 CF 9462 will be $5,000. Should you make bond, you're to have no contact with Johnny Stallnecker. You're not to return to 1254 East Bay Street. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. With respect to case 22 CF 9463, again, bond will be $5,000. No contact with Johnny Stallnecker. No return to 1254 East Bay Street. No uh, possession of any weapons or firearms. And your next court date will be provided. And... Uh, Again, you'll need to hire counsel. Right? Yes, Thank sir. you. Your Honor, would the court consider reducing? He said that he'd be able to afford a $1,000 bond with that in consideration as required under the statute. We'd ask the court to lower the bond amount in this case. I would also point out that it's, I think, an important fact to be considered that no firearm was recovered. Um, that there's no other proof other than a single individual's allegations in this case. Okay, without prejudice to uh, pursuing those arguments at a bond hearing, uh, today's ruling will stand as it's been. It's 5000 on each. All right, thank you. Thank you, Judge. Lee Hill. 500 each one. Both. There's two. Uh, the next one I had on mine was Lee Hill. We don't have that one, I'll adopt it. Okay. Might have bonded. It's a, yeah, it's a theft. Although we had an out of county warrant from Hillsborough. Uh, the full name is Lee Walter Hill. I'll just put it at the bottom of the stack and we'll keep moving along. And is, uh, how about uh, Ricky Jingai? Oh, maybe we're out of order. Okay. I have that one as well. Lee Walter Hill bonded, Your Honor. I just... He did bond. Okay. So I can. And he, even though he had it, let's see, I guess the out-of-county warrant, he must have had a bond. Um, yeah, $2,000 bond. Okay, very good. That's, I'm good with bonds. <laughs> okay, uh, Ricky Jinghai? No? You can step forward, sir. Alan Johnson? No, that's behavior, Your Honor. Okay, I just need to know who we have here. Kyle Mikowski. Say again? Kyle Mikowski. Kyle Mikowski. All right, Mr. Mikowski. We have three cases. Just one moment. I do find probable cause for grand theft of a motor vehicle in 22 CF 9436. Um, probable cause for operating motorcycle without the required endorsement. And uh, there's also failures to appear in case 22 MM 471. On the failure to appear, it looks like there's three counts and you have bond of $200 in each count. That's 22 MM 471. Grand theft motor vehicle, your bond will remain $1,000. And on the criminal traffic citation for no motorcycle endorsement, uh, I'll reduce the bond to $100. Your next court dates will be provided. Public Defender's Office is appointed. Thank you. Alan Johnson is behavior, Your Honor. Okay, let me... I, I did want to, again, go back to... Uh, do we know anything about Ricky Roshan Jinghai? We don't have those in our docket, Your Honor. Probably bonded, okay. All right, so is Alan Johnson the next one? That's the one that's behavior. Behavior, okay. Yeah. Um, one more time, please. Sorry. 8896. 8896, okay. And he has bonded, Your Honor? Okay. With respect to Alan Johnson, I'll make a provisional appointment of the Public Defender's Office. Um, having reviewed the police report, I do find probable cause for the listed offenses. And uh, I find uh, because of the information that the defendant is not present due to behavior, find a waiver of initial appearance. I'm going to go ahead and maintain his bonds as they've been set. 1,000 on count one resisting, 500 on count two exposure of sexual organs, 500 on count three attempted battery of law enforcement officer.
special conditions of release, the defendant <clears throat> is not returned to the 2400 block of Dardanelle Drive. Now, his address is on that block, so I'm going to grant an assist order for a one-time return with the assistance of the Sheriff's Office for acquiring personal belongings. But again, until further or order the court, no return to 2400 block. Your Honor, I, no. I'd object to that. Yeah. I don't think that the court has the power to have him not return. I, I don't see the being able to prevent him to go back to a place that he lives at. This man has mental health issues. I don't think that's a good idea either. But Okay, I want to address the first issue. The court doesn't have the authority to prohibit him from returning to his home? It, I, Yes, Your Honor. I, I don't think that that would be the case. What's your legal authority for that proposition? Well, the, I can the keep term, him in jail if I the, choose to. The terms of release have to be dictated by one trying to match the crime, right? So if he's presenting a risk of harm to someone in that home, that makes sense why we don't allow them to return home domestic violence cases. We don't have that here. Let me articulate why I've done that. Uh, the alleged offense, the indecent exposure uh, in front of young children is alleged to have occurred at 2420 Dardanelle Drive, which happens to be next door, uh, at least based upon the physical address, 2420 Dardanelle Drive. His address is 2410. It would seem to be that that's an adjacent neighbor. And so this is until further order of the court. You can file a motion to modify bond. Um, but since this event has allegedly just occurred, uh, actually, it's a, it's a warrant. So it occurred in the past. But uh, that's the court's ruling, and the court certainly has authority to issue that ruling. All right, Roy Melendez. Good afternoon. Mr. Melendez, I'll appoint the public defender to represent. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, I'll appoint the public defender to represent you in this matter. This is counsel standing to your left. I have reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for the offense of uh, criminal mischief. Um, Mr. Youngblood, history? Yes, Your Honor. Um, he has um, no history uh, in state, out of state convictions, burglar of a habitation, aggravated robbery, out of state arrest, prohibited substance in the correctional facility, alcohol, drugs, and felony. All right. All right, Mr. Melendez, I'm going to set bond at $1,000. You're not to return to the La Quinta Inn located at 5825 International Drive. Your next court date will be provided. Thank you. What? I don't know what that was about. Okay, let's go to Joel Manuel Ortiz Colon. Good afternoon, sir. You've been arrested on a warrant for which a court's already found probable cause and set bond, uh, dealing in stolen property, receiving uh, money from pawnbroker by false verification of ownership and petty theft. This is one I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing any paper. That's the only case he's, that's the case he's here for, is just that one. Right, right, right. Okay, so again, uh, court found probable cause for those matters. Um, the bond will stay as they've been set, which is 5000 on count one, the dealing in stolen property, 150 on the false verification of ownership, and 150 on the petty theft. As you know, you're out on bond, Mr. Um, Ortiz Colon, you're out on bond on 20... 1 CF 162710. I believe he was actually released for a non filing after the 33rd day. That case is still not filed on. Oh. State, do you concur with that? I. Because if he's ROR, I'm I guess sure. you can revoke ROR, but. I'm sure that's true, but I can double check. I'm just basing it on the cover sheet that says um, he was out on a surety bond. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, I don't see any action taken on this case. Just one second. The case number was changed, so I'm going to make sure. Um, yes, nothing has been done from our office regarding. All right, I'll take no action on that case. Um, your next court date will be provided, sir. Thank you. David Pierce. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. I will appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. Court finds probable cause for a grand theft of a motor vehicle and driving while license suspended. Mr. Uh, Youngblood? Yes, he does qualify, Your Honor. David Pierce. Okay. When you say that, for direct PTR? Or direct PTR, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Pierce, you'll be placed on direct pretrial release supervision. You have to follow the rules of the program. You have to show up for all of your court appearances, of course. Sure. Uh, just a second. All right, and your next court date will be provided. Thank you. All right, yes, sir. Thank you. Henry Porter. Refuse, Your Honor. All right. All right. The uh, court did review the police affidavit. The defendant has elected to refuse to come to initial appearance, so he's waived his initial appearance. The uh, court will just keep the bonds as they've been set, which is 1,000 on counts one and two and 500 on counts three and four. Defendants not to return to 14548 East Colonial Drive. That's 14548, the Walmart. Not to possess any drugs unless prescribed. And the next court date will be provided. <clears throat> Raymond Robber. All right, Mr. Rauber, is it pronounced Rauber? Rauber, yes. All right, Mr. Rauber. You don't qualify for the public defender's office, so you have the right to an attorney, but you would have to hire your own if you're going to be represented. There are five listed charges. I find probable cause for four of them. Find probable cause for uh, count one, battery in a law enforcement officer. Count two, resisting an officer with violence. Count three, resisting an officer without violence. Count four, trespassing. I don't find probable cause for disorderly intoxication based on the uh, content of the affidavit as it presently consists. Um, Mr. Um, Youngblood? Yes, he does uh, qualify for um, State have any position on that? Um, we would ask that he be PTR with a bond, given the charges um, and the battery on the firefighter. Um, but no objection to ROR on the charge with no PC. Um, defense? Sorry, we're not appointed. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Is there any way I can get my bond reduced to $2,500, Your Honor? Just, just one moment. Um, Mr. Youngblood, do you have the history? I know there's a sheet in here yes, somewhere. Uh, but Last conviction, uh, 14814, DUI second offense, damage to personal property. Uh, other conviction, uh, multi state offenses, was no operating license, DUI uh, once, DUI twice, uh, Dwillis, um, some contempt of courts, possession of controlled substance, under the influence of controlled substance, battery with serious bodily injury. Um, that's all for conviction. Um, Your Honor, given Just a that moment. he doesn't Sorry. have um, representation here today and he does qualify for PTR, no objection to PTR, but we ask that he please refrain from drinking any alcohol. That appears to be an issue. And I'm being nice. I'm very good, Your Honor. I didn't drink at all. I just had a tough weekend and it's, okay. it's just been, it's been so, a and stuff. So. Was there anything else, you, anything else you wanted to say? No, I just was asking to see if I could get my bond reduced. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to set your bond on count one at $1,000. Okay. 
Uh, your bond on count two will be 500. Uh, count three will be uh, 500, and count four will be 100. Those are your bond amounts. And you're uh, released on your own recognizance on count five, and this is subject to pretrial release supervision, so bond with PTR. The following conditions, you not return to 129 West Plant Street in Winter Garden. That's the whole enchilada restaurant or business establishment. Don't go back to that location. And uh, your next court date will be provided. All right. Okay. So Thank you. So do, 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 can I go? Can I go? You can bond out if you, yeah, you, uh, if you have the resources to bond out, you can bond out. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Your Honor, I appreciate it. Have a good day. You know I don't have a court date scheduled yet? You'll, you'll receive it. No, oh, I was supposed to. Did I? Did I mention no alcoholic beverages? No. Um, if I didn't, I need to tell him that. I meant to. I thought I did, yeah. but he needs to come back. Yeah, I actually wrote that down before. I think you did say it because I wrote it. Oh, I wrote no. it down. Yeah, no. yeah I, I, I neglected to. I believe it was that one thirty call last night. <laughs> Emergency duty. I, I neglected to tell you one thing as well. Um. There were, some, there were some facts contained in the affidavit that makes the state's request reasonable, and that is that as a condition of your release, you're not to possess or consume any alcoholic beverages or go to any bars. All right? Fair enough. Thank you. Fine. All right, sir. <laughs> Already been decided to do that. All right. Uh, those, those other offenses were from years and years ago. I've been very okay. good the last 10 years of this. So. All right. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Laureen Supreme. Behavior, Your Honor. All right. Right. There's no. Uh, there's no information. Uh, I will. I'll ask you, our assistant public defender. I apologize. I didn't hear your last name clearly, even though I asked you to say it twice. Bolin. Spelled B O L I N. B O W L I N. Okay, Bolin. All right, uh, Mr. Bolin. You haven't been appointed, so I don't know if you wanted to say anything regarding Lorreen Supreme. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I said your office hasn't been appointed, and I did not get any paperwork. Uh, that would allow me to make the appointment. I don't know if you wanted to speak on. If we can behalf. be uh, appointed based on the fact it looks like she has mental health issues, uh, it does allow for the public defender to be appointed on that basis. All right, I'll make a provisional appointment at the public defender's office. There's three listed charges. I find probable cause for counts one and three, probable cause for burglary of a structure. Um, I don't find probable cause for assault on a person 65 years of age or older, no PC. And I find probable cause for theft. Um, Mr. Youngblood? Yes, Your Honor. History? Um, she has one misdemeanor conviction, 5 16 22 for trespassing. Um, she has arrest for battery DB2, false imprisonment DB, tampering with witness to hinder communication with Leo, and that's all. Okay. All right. <clears throat> the bond will be uh, 5000 on count one. I'm going to ROR the defendant on count two due to no PC, and bond will remain 100 on count three. And defendant's not to return to 3985 South Orange Blossom Trail, the business premises of the alleged offense. Also to have no contact with Mr. Robert Pant Pantlin, P-A-N-T-L-I-N, and so it will be also supervised by pretrial release, if eligible, bond with pretrial release conditions. Um, she was never interviewed. Um, I think the burglar of occupied structure, assault on person, she, I believe she'll meet the criteria for pretrial, but with her not being interviewed, the reason we did not uh, put her on. Okay. And, um, well, I... I Yes, you can screen it for pretrial release supervision, but those are the conditions of release that I indicated. Yes, if qualifies. If qualifies. Um, you can just put bond plus PTR because none of the I can't see anything here that's gonna um, disqualify. What I see that would prevent that. Okay, great. Okay, Ruben Trinidad Rodriguez. Good afternoon. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. This is Mr. Boland standing to your left. The court finds probable cause for the lesser included offense of battery 
And um, any, um, Mr. Young, Youngblood? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to know the history, of course. Yeah, I, I know the sheets are in here somewhere, but. Trinidad Rodriguez, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, like that, uh, his last conviction was 114.22 for Dwellis. He has prior convictions of battery DD times two, improper exhibit, exhibit of firearm or dangerous weapon, dealing with stolen property, false ownership, and info pawned items less than 300, and grand theft of a dwelling, possession of cocaine, another dwellist, and a petty theft. And he's also a multi-state offender with multiple convictions out of state. Similar. All right, Mr. Uh, Trinidad Rodriguez, your bond will be set at $1,000, and you're to have no contact whatsoever with Angel or Angel Torres, who is the alleged victim in the case, no contact whatsoever. Your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Okay, uh, I, my next case is Neil Arce. Neil Arce? Right. Good morning. All right, hello. I will appoint the public defender to represent you in this matter. This is Mr. Boland standing to your left. I find probable cause for trespassing and possession of drug paraphernalia. Second. I don't see his paper. Um, Mr. Youngblood? Yes, Your Honor. Any? Or Neil Arce? Yes, sir. Um, gentleman has last conviction, 81420 BOP, trespass out of state. <laughs> Um, grand theft motor vehicle in state, defraud innkeeper times three, domestic battery, threatening Leo, resisting officer without violence. Thanks. Okay. All right, bond uh, count one will be $100. Count two, $100 on the drug paraphernalia charge. No return to 71 13 South of Orange Blossom Trail. Don't go back to those business premises. And your next court date will be provided. Thank you. That was, Your Honor, will you repeat those bond amounts? I'm 100 on each count for a total of 200. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Bailey Douglas. Ms. Douglas? All right, just a second. All right, Ms. Douglas, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Mr. Boland here standing to your left. I've reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for the list of defense of prostitution and entering or remaining in any place or structure for that purpose. Uh, just a second. Yeah. <laughs> Honor, Ms. Douglas has indicated to me she doesn't have any financial means to post a monetary bond in this case. We'd ask the court to consider that in setting terms of release that wouldn't require her to pay anything. Um, Mr. Youngblood, does she qualify for direct PTR? Um, she was not qualified for that, Your Honor. I, I'm looking at this and trying to see what this was about. She has two felony convictions, four misdemeanors. Her last conviction was 11 19 for soliciting. I don't see any kind of open cases or anything else. Um, that's, I'd like to look real quick to see if she has a residency in town because I would like to see. She might have a prior conviction. She did provide an address. It just wasn't verified. So uh, PTR is an option. couldn't provide any contact for verifying what she did give us because I she already gave us the address. Okay, I was looking for the uh, state you can help me out or defense. I was looking for the uh, particular hotel where the offense occurred. I'm just going to order not um, to return. It was on Austrian court. So that is the you have the right to remain silent, but uh, it'll speed things up if you tell me the hotel where this allegedly occurred unless your attorney interjects and says not to help. <laughs> I 
the courtyard in on International Drive, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Just a second. All right, so you're not to return to the courtyard in on International Drive. Don't go back to that business. You'll be placed on pretrial release supervision. You have to follow all the rules of pretrial release. Show up for all of your court dates, and your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Call your attorney in two weeks. Alexis Ellis. Hello, Ms. Ellis. What do I, say? I don't have any information here about an, uh, your application for the public defender's office. Are you interested in having a lawyer? No, sir, not for this case. You don't want a lawyer? Okay. I, I find probable cause for trespassing. And uh, let's see. Qualify for direct PTR. Um, she refused to talk to us, Your Honor. Okay. I asked for R and R for this here. Okay, I'm going to set your bond at two hundred and fifty dollars. You're not to return to the Sitco located at seven ninety four South Tampa Avenue. Don't go back to that location. All right. Your next court date will be provided. You said I didn't want to speak. Estella Powell. Uh, Bonded, Your Honor. Bonded, Can we okay. get appointed on Miss Ellis's case? What were you asking? Can we be appointed on Miss Ellis's case, Your Honor? I agree. You want a lawyer? Yes, sir. Do you have enough money to hire your own? I can't hear you. It's there. Yes, sir. You have enough money to go out and hire a private attorney? Let me just ask you this. If you walked into an attorney's office tomorrow and he said, if you give me $1,000 to retain my services, I'll represent you. Do you have $1,000? Yes, sir. Okay, well. Your Honor, I, I, I'm having, as a friend of the court, competency concerns. Again, this court is allowed to appoint the public defender office when there's mental health issues involved. No, no. Well, since I'm allowed to, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and make a provisional appointment of the public defender's office. All right, it's a provisional appointment, and that concludes the hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Estella Powell. Uh, Bonda, Your Honor. All right. I like bonds. <laughs> James Thomas. Hello, sir. All right, Mr. Thomas, I will appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. This is a um, case of theft. I find probable cause based on my review of the affidavit. Does he qualify for direct PTR? Mr. James Thomas, Petty Theft. Um, we have, I have says that he's already on PTR, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Well, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Thomas, I'm setting your bond or keeping your bond at $250. If you make bond, you're not to return to Circle K located at 801 South Cimarron. Miss um, Tyner, were you going to say something? Oh, I was just saying um, that it was listed as not qualified for PTR. Okay. All right, Mr. Thomas. Uh, you... if, if he was out on PTR, then there might be, we might need to address the, the PTR case he's out on. Um, yeah. It's not there. I don't see it. That was missed. I apologize. It's okay. It's set, uh, brought back in. I'll research it right now and get that information. Uh, what, what, uh, what's, the, what's your reliance? Uh, what are you relying on for I just have a printout um, of it. It literally just says qualifies for PTR. No reasons not released DNQ. And then typically if they're out on bond, it'll give me um, a little box that says what they're out on bond on, but I don't have any of that for him. I do see that his last conviction listed was in 2014. So do you have the open case inside of, is there a bunch of paper thing? I don't see not, not printed. No. But I can see if he's on our. The, uh, on the police report, residency says transient. And unfortunately for me in the search, there are 
quite a few Thomas James. <laughs> so, or James Thomas. James Thomas. I believe I can provide you with a uh, case number and get that for you. Yes. I'm, my my clerk reports is the same. But he, there should have been a, a, a sheet provided. Number for that is twenty twenty two CF zero zero eight nine nine four A zero. Okay. All right, no hit possession of cocaine. I have this as Thomas James the third. Yes. Um and I don't see where his release information is. Um, he was released, conditional release, zero bond. So he was released um, PTR on August 3rd of this year for the uh, cocaine charge. August 3rd? All right. Thanks, Your Honor. Well, unfortunately, Mr. Thomas, this being a specific intent crime, theft, uh, I am going to revoke your pretrial release in that case number, which was, again, 22 CF, um, Ms. Tyner, 22 CF. Um, 8994. All right. So um, PTR will be revoked on that. I'll grant a bond of $2,500. And Mr. Thomas, uh, in addition to not uh, being re able to return to that Circle K on the uh, felony case that you're on, that you were on PTR for, you cannot possess, ingest, or consume any illegal substances or any controlled substances without a prescription. Public defender will be appointed on that as well. Um, can state please have the bond amount one more time? Twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Thank you. That is. Yeah, his PTR is revoked, and uh, give him a twenty-five hundred dollar bond. Larry Willis, yes, sir, hello. How doing, Good. How are you? I am good. All right. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. This is Mr. Boland, standing to your left. Thank you. I have reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for uh, the listed charges of theft and open container of an alcoholic beverage. Um, I believe the defendant is out on bond on possession of cocaine and possession of drug paraphernalia in case number 20, let's see, um, twenty two CF 6412. Mr. Willis, I'm going to keep your bonds as they've been set on the theft and open container of alcohol. It's 250 on each count. Unfortunately, uh, theft being a specific intent offense, and you're being and you you're out on bond on the uh, felony case. I'm going to revoke your bond sure. in 22. See ya. Yes, sir. I can't hear you. It's probably because your attorney's muting you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to revoke your bond in 22 CF 6412, and um, it'll be a zero bond on that case, and your next court dates will be provided. Revoke my bond? I revoked your bond on the cocaine paraphernalia case. Yes, sir. The bond's revoked on that. It's a zero bond, all right? And I gave you, your bonds will remain $250 on each of the charges for today, theft and open container. I don't have a bond on my not on the felony. As you as you may know or should know, if you have an open case pending, such as the cocaine and paraphernalia case, you have to be law abiding. You can't go out and commit a theft, otherwise your bond gets revoked. And that's what's happened today. All right, good luck. Can I get another bond on it? No, sir. You're presumed innocent. These are probable cause findings. No. Maybe. I don't think so though. Oh, sorry. Paul Sight is bond are you on it? Asim John. Asim John bonded. Nicole Sykes bonded. Oh, Nicole, Nicole oh. Sykes. Oh, Nicole Sykes. Okay. 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 N
Nicole Sykes. Oh, Nicole Sykes. There she go. Okay. Thank you for that. That's a Brevard warrant, but she had a bond, so she's gone. So is a seam John here, or did he bond too? We don't have that one on the dock of the owners. Hmm? You have a booking number. I'm for him. I'll just check it. We think we have a little. Eight eight seven five. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen John respond to the office. Okay. Tiffany Gray. Hello there. This is just one case, right? 22 CF 9418. Yeah. And judge, uh, a judge has already found probable cause for first degree murder with a weapon. The public defender's office will be appointed to represent you in this case. All right. Um, The court will not hold any type of evidentiary hearing today on whether the proof of guilt is evident or the presumption is great. But given the fact that this is a uh, capital offense, the defendant will be remain in on a zero bond. And Ms. Gray, your next court date will be provided. All right. No, they did. They have a warrant. Remember, I told you not to. No, they can't take me out. Okay, going next to John Doe, also known as Paul Anthony Lindo. Refused, Your Honor. Refused, okay. Okay, I also, uh, which seems to go hand in hand, I didn't get any documentation from him about uh, seeking counsel, so. Um, he really should have come because... Uh, Okay. Your Honor, could the public defender be appointed in this case, given the fact it's punishable, um, given the severity of the crime? I'll make a provisional appointment of the public defender's office. Um, there may be some arguments for lesser included and as, as opposed to the main charge on a couple of these, but if the defendant's not coming to court, I'm not going to... Uh, He's waiving his initial appearance, and the defendant will uh, simply remain on the existing bonds: ten thousand on count one, one fifty on count two, one fifty on count three, and one hundred on count four. And uh, not going to reset him for tomorrow. The next court date will be provided. Oh, sorry. Thank that you. case is not filed, on your honor. I neglected to. Uh, deal with that matter. So the defendant's out on bond. Um, what's that case number? Huh. 22 CF 7122, possession of methamphetamine. Bonded on June tw July 29th. I understand it may not be filed on, um, but I'm still going to revoke his bond on that case based upon the um, specific intent crimes for which I'm finding probable cause, and he'll be held on zero bond on that case. All right, so bond is revoked on that other CF and held on a zero bond. Thank you. All right, Louis Yandarilla Galarza. Hello, sir. I will uh, let's see six thousand a month. Sixty. That'd be what seventy-two thousand a year. All right, sir. So you don't qualify for the public defender's office. Your income six thousand a month. Yes, sir. 
Okay, so you have to hire your own attorney. You have the right to a lawyer, but you'll need to hire one. You've been arrested on a violation of probation. The underlying charge was sale and delivery of cocaine. Judge Wooten set your bond at zero. It will remain zero at this time, and you'll receive your next court date. Thank you. Mohamed Mara. Mohamed Mara. Okay, sir. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You have counsel. This is Mr. Boland standing to your left, an attorney with the public defender's office. You've been arrested on a violation of probation. And the issuing court, Judge Calderon, uh, set your bond in this case at zero. It will remain zero at this time, and your next court date will be provided. Thank you, sir. Kieran Moore. Hello, sir. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. This is Mr. Boland to your left. You've been arrested on a violation of probation. Judge Wooten set bond at zero. It will remain zero at this time, and your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right. Have we run everything? Um, I just have a couple. I think I think they probably bonded. I have Flores, Angela Flores. It was bonded. a DUI. Um, Green, Green Rivera's, Green Reyes, and then Kenzie Burton. Um, um, the first one, the first two is traffic, right? Um, the DUI bonded, that's Flores. The next traffic case bonded. And then I have Nicole Green Reyes. It was a, okay. And then Kenzie Burton. She bonded. Love it. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge. See you in the morning. All right. Sorry to get uh, about the mental health people. I just... Uh, I want to no. Um, and is this Mrs. Skerdo? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Okay, apparently the court reporter has uh, raised a red flag. They're not hearing what's taking place. It's a gurgly noise. Am I heard Maybe. now? I, I can't speak for the court reporter, but let's, let's uh, give them a moment to respond. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. And Your Honor, it's a pleasure being before you. The last time I was before you was when Your Honor was covering for Judge Nix Walker. Yes, I, I recognize you there despite the mask. It's good to be back with you. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't know what I can do here. Okay. So maybe you can put a mic for when I told her that we're doing the video. So maybe Osceola's got a button. I don't know. I don't know, but the court reporter's having issues with um, in Osceola County hearing. She said she'll do it there. Okay. Ms. Anderson, uh, I've reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for the listed charge of battery. Uh, and, and state attorney's office, if... Uh, State representative can put your name on the record. Of course. Good morning. Tressie Tyner for the state of Florida. All right. Ms. Tyner for the state. Just a moment. Mr. Marino, um, history. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, she has history dating back to 2018 out of Osceola County um, for obtaining uh, property. She did do a uh, probation for that. She was found guilty. That is the only history she has. The uh, victim is requesting contact. We did make contact with the victim. They uh, stated they're not intending to move forward with the case. And she does qualify for bond with PTR. 
Ms. Anderson, I'm setting your bond at $500 with pretrial release supervision. Until further order of the court, you're to have absolutely no contact with Mr. John Howell. No contact means none, no emails, no third-party communications. You can talk to your lawyer about possibly getting a modification, but until then, no contact. You're also not to return to 5150 Boggy Creek Road, the Florida RV Resort. If you have property at that location, such as clothing, toiletries, or items for work, I would grant a one-time return with the assistance of the Sheriff's Office for acquiring those belongings. And uh, your next court date will be provided. Okay, you'll receive that next court date in due course. And the Public Defender's Office uh, is provisionally appointed to represent you. Right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Caesar Batalis. Your Honor, he will be brought last due to um, his mental health. Okay. Coming next then to Desiree Batista Ortiz. Present and approaching. Thank you. I'll make a provisional appointment of the Public Defender's Office. Good morning, Ms. Batista Ortiz. I've reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for violation of a domestic violence injunction. Your Honor, may defense be heard regarding probable cause? Of course. Your Honor, it's my understanding that Ms. Ortiz advised that the um, domestic violence injunction was no longer in effect when this incident occurred. I was unable to connect to the internet while at the jail to confirm. Um, however, uh, defense would be objecting to probable cause based on the information relayed by Ms. Ortiz that the domestic violence injunction is no longer in effect. All right. Well, there's often uh, two sides to a story and additional factors to be considered. My uh, probable cause determination is based on the sworn affidavit before me. Uh, so you could certainly continue to pursue that and bring it to a court's attention. But based upon the sworn affidavit, I find probable cause. I'm setting bond at $1,000. Ms. Batista Ortiz, you must abide by all injunctions as a condition of your release. Your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Okay. Manuel Caez. Your Honor, may we reset Mr. Caez till tomorrow? Uh, on what basis? One second, Your Honor. Behavior, Your Honor. Behavior prior to initial appearance beginning while we were waiting here. All right. Do you wish to waive his initial appearance? Your Honor, I would prefer to reset it just so that he has an understanding of what occurs at initial appearance. I will be here tomorrow. I'll grant one reset. Um, we'll uh, take up Mr. Kayes tomorrow. Thank you, Your and Honor. I'll, and I'll try to retain my sticky note. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Guys. Yes. All right, moving next to Victor Caputis Hernandez. Three cases. Your Honor, yeah. you got released to admin. Get up. He's in a wheelchair. He had two FTAs with zero bond. Oh, wait, no. Is that in Victor? Victor Caputis Hernandez was here for a driving while license revoked. Carlos Correct. Caius William is the individual oh. via FTA. I'm sorry. That's my mistake. I apologize. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, he's released uh, administrative PTR. So we'll turn next to, sorry about that. We'll turn next to William Cartias. Present and approach. All right, Mr. Cartias, good afternoon. You're here before the court for a failure to appear for sentencing in two cases. Uh, one is 19 CF 2132, failure to appear on a grand theft sentencing. Your bond zero will remain zero, and you'll get a new sentencing date. Uh, same thing with respect to 19 CF 2. Actually, that's the same case number. Okay. Huh. Your Honor, I apologize, but for Mr. Cartayas, I have a 21 CF 2779. It's an FTA. All right, the documentation I have is for a failure to appear to sentencing in, 20, in 19 CF 2132. And uh, can you repeat that case number, uh, Ms. Esquerdo? Your the Honor, other one? Yes, the case number that I have is 21 CF 2779. I have two police reports with the same case number. I do not have the other case number that Your Honor is referring to. Hmm. 
I just have what I've been given, and it's uh, it's. Your Honor, I have both uh, arrest affidavits. Both case numbers are correct. So he had one in 19 CF 2132 and also 21 CF 2779. And Your Honor, PTR has just handed me the reports that I was missing. That is correct. It's 19 CF 2132. And the second case number is 21 CF 2779. Okay. Well, just so we're clear, the only... The only documentation I have is for the one I referenced, which is 2132, and the defendant will remain in on a zero bond and will receive a new sentencing date. I, I need to get the documentation for the other one so that I can make an informed judgment. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I will send that over in just a moment to your clerk. You okay, that would, be, that would be great. So, Mr. Kataris, if you can stay in the courtroom there, perhaps we'll be able to readdress this. All right. The court has 2132, but the court did not have 2779, which I had. All right, so Mr. Kataris, remain in the courtroom, and I'll readdress your other matter momentarily. Thank you, Your you can Honor. Have, you can have a seat. Thank you. Have a seat in the meantime. Elliot Davila. Your Honor, Officer uh, Marino is requesting a couple of seconds so that he can send the court the additional case for Mr. Kataris. He stepped into his office momentarily. All right. I am going to mute myself in the meantime. Mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> okay. She said Okay. Great. Officer Marino advised he sent over to the court the information for Mr. Cartayas. Okay. I want to march ahead on uh, other matters, and we'll address that at the end. Let's go. Uh, Mr. D Davila, yes, good morning. Uh, we have three cases. Um, first of all, in case number 20 CF 182, you're in custody for failing to appear on a possession of cocaine case. The issuing court set your bond at zero. That's Judge uh, Lattimore. I guess that's in the problem-solving court. It will remain zero at this time, and you'll get a new court date. Also, you've been arrested on a violation of probation in case 20 CF uh, 182, same case with a uh, zero bond. And then in case 21 CF 2577, failing to appear for a criminal traffic offense, the issuing court set your bond at zero, public defender appointed in each matter, and again, you'll get your next court dates. Thank you. Your Honor, I have two FTAs, uh, 21 right. CF 2577 and 20 CF 182. Yeah, I did put that on the record of FTA and a failure to appear in 20 CF 182. Okay, so two FTAs and two VOPs. No, okay. according to what I have. Okay. Perhaps I didn't address uh, 21 CF 2577 violation of probation on a driving while license suspended underlying charge in that zero bond. So that's correct. Two, two FTAs, two VOPs, zero bonds in all. Uh, public defender appointed. Court dates to be provided. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Gregory. Present and approaching. Provisionally. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, I'm not seeing the paperwork I normally see here. But. Okay, uh, Mr. Gregory, good uh, morning. I will provisionally appoint the public defender to represent you. I reviewed the police report. I find probable cause for possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. Uh, 
I see that there's a direct PTR qualification here, apparently. Um, however, I'm, I'm going to set bond. I'm going to reduce your bond. I'll set it at $2,500. And subject to pretrial release supervision, you're obviously not to possess any weapons or firearms. And your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Mackin, Julmi or Hulme? President approaching. And your honor, defense would like to be heard regarding probable cause. Okay. Go ahead. Your honor, it's my understanding that on paragraph two of the second page, the last okay. um, sentence, it states that while parking the patrol vehicle, the officer observed Mr. Mackin allegedly open his driver's side door and begin to run northbound in the complex. Defense would argue that um, there is case law that exists that flight alone is not enough for a resisting officer without violence. It's given that in this case, um, at that time, Mr. Julmi was not being arrested by police. Therefore, defense would object to probable cause. State's response. Um, you said paragraph two. Paragraph one, which is technically two, but it is on page two. Thank you. And it would be the last, second to last sentence. All right. I, I, I do see where he was ordered to stop and lay on the ground. Um, he complied, but prior to that, he was not obeying lawful um, requests from officers. So we would argue that that's the probable cause for obstruction. All right, uh, Mrs. Esquerdo, I, I concur that flight alone is insufficient for resisting without violence when there is not um, probable cause for the officer to detain an individual uh, and there's not been any kind of directive for the individual to stop in view of that probable cause. However, in this case, the court finds that the officer was acting lawfully and attempting to detain the defendant. And so the flight in that instance would be sufficient. I find probable cause for driving while license suspended, as well as resisting an officer without violence. With respect to uh, setting, uh, this also looks to be a direct PTR possibility. Mr. Marino, history? I apologize, Your Honor. The, the audio cut off. Did the court ask us something? I asked Mr. Marino for criminal history. Yes, Your Honor. Um, he has one aggravated assault out of Orange County, which was in 2021. That was dropped. He did get a burglary. Um, he was charged with a burglary unarmed as a juvenile. He got sentenced as an adult in 2017. He did uh, do time in um, DOC. And the DOC conviction was what? For a burglary of um, burglary unarmed. Of a structure, I'm sorry. All right, Mr. Home, your bonds are going to remain $500 on the driving while license suspended, as well as $500 on resisting an officer without violence. You'll receive your court dates. Public defender has been appointed to represent you. Thank you. Nathan Lockard. President approaching. Thank you. Two cases. All right, good morning, Mr. Lockard. Good morning, sir. I'll provisionally appoint the public defender to represent you in the matter. I've read the police report. I find probable cause for petty theft. And there's also, you've been arrested for a failure to appear in case 22MM843. Judge Sanders Marinci did give you a bond on the failure to appear, $5,000. Your bond on the petty theft will remain $500. 
Should you make bond on the petty theft, you're not to return to the Wawa located at 3140 Vineland Road, and your next court dates will be provided. Thank you. Thank you. Oscar Mendoza Valencia. Present and approaching, Your Honor. He does require the Spanish interpreter. Okay. Um, and hit the plus. Okay. Interpreter. Okay. And I'd like to handle all interpreter matters that we have at Osceola consecutively, if that's possible. That's fine, Your Honor. I'll ask him to sit down. Just hit interpreter. Yes. Okay. And then uh, add. Mm -hmm. Thanks. She's, she's going to have him sit down, I think. Tome asiento y lo llamo de nuevo. Okay. Good afternoon. This oh. is Dalia Romero, Spanish interpreter. <laughs> All right. Um, Ms. Romero, good morning. Uh, we are, of course, morning, doing initial appearances, as you know. So we'll begin. Um, Mr. Mendoza Valencia, I'm Judge Epperson. Good morning. Muy buenos días, señor ben Mendoza Valencia. Tenemos al juez Epperson aquí. You've been arrested on a writ for child support. Usted fue detenido por una orden por no pagar manutención. Your purge amount is $2,000. La cantidad para poder salir es de $2,000. This is out of Orange County, Florida. Y esto es del condado de Orange, de la Florida. So Orange should come and pick, pick you up within 24 hours. Así que el condado de Orange debe de venir a recogerle a usted en las próximas 24 horas. So $2,000 is like a key to get out of jail. That's a purge amount if you're able to pay it. $2,000 es lo que usted va a necesitar para poder salir de la cárcel, para pulgar de la cárcel. Si paga los $2,000, le dejan salir. Otherwise, you'll go before a hearing officer or court in the coming days. De lo contrario, va a tener que ir al juzgado para una audiencia en los próximos días. Thank you. Gracias. Mrs. Esquerdo, any other interpreter needs in Osceola County? No, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Romero, thank you. You're welcome, Your Honor. Daryl Peterson. President approaching. All right. Good morning, Mr. Peterson. Good morning. You've been arrested on a violation of probation in case 15 CF 4753. Judge Karsten, uh, the circuit court set bond at zero. It will remain zero at this time, and you'll receive your next court date and public defenders appointed to represent you provisionally. One Thank second, you. Your Honor, Mr. Peterson wanted to relay information. One moment. Okay. <laughs> Your Honor, Mr. Um, Peterson wanted to advise the court that he already has a hearing set for the violation of probation on August 19. Okay. Well, if that's the case, Judge Carson will see you on that date. Thank you for that information. Thomas Sanchez, two cases. Your Honor, we're requesting that Mr. Sanchez be called last due to medical reasons. Brand, thank you. Brandon Vasquez. He is currently in detox, Your Honor. May we reset him one time till tomorrow? We'll reset Mr. Vasquez for tomorrow. Thank you. Be retained. All right. Brian Velez Rodriguez. Present and approaching. Public defender provisionally appointed. All right, Mr. Velez Rodriguez, I've reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for the offense of battery, domestic, as well as resisting a law enforcement officer without violence. Um, Mr. Marino, um, summary of history. Yes, Your Honor. Here's history dating back to 2010 through 2012. Uh, multiple uh, resisting without violence. Um, homicide that was dropped. Aggravated battery, fleeing and looting. Uh, eluding, hit and run, DUI. Most recently in 2021, he had a battery, a uh, battery on a Leo, which was uh, found guilty 
a resisting without violence that was guilty as well. Um, and history out of Georgia in 2019 for um, marijuana possession. He did do a year of probation. All right, your bond on the battery will be $2,500. Your I'm sorry, Judge, that's not his, his case. Brian Velez. On the battery. Right, Brian Velez Rodriguez. I thought you said Brandy. That's the one we were going to call. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. I just want to confirm, though, this is Mr. Brian Velez Rodriguez. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Velez Rodriguez, um, I'm setting bond at $2,500 on the battery domestic based on the totality of circumstances and history. Your bond will remain 250 on the resisting without violence. Should you make bonds supervised by pretrial release supervision, you're to have no contact whatsoever with Noelis Ramos Figueroa. No contact means absolutely none. No third party communications, no emails, text messages, or any other type. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. You're not to return to 209 points in a circle. If you have property at that location, such as clothing, toiletries, or items for work, are you paying attention? Yes, sir. Right. If you have property at that location, I would grant a one-time return with the assistance of the sheriff's office for acquiring those belongings. Your next court date will be provided. Thank you. Have a seat, sir. Your Honor. When they qualify for PTR and you give a bond, are you going to have them do PTR and a bond? If I, if I am going to have them supervised by pretrial release, I'll give them a bond and say supervised by pretrial release. Okay. I want to make sure I didn't miss any of the prior ones. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thanks. All right, Kenneth Witt. Your Honor, defense is requesting one time reset. He is currently in detox. All right, I'll give one time reset for Mr. Witt until tomorrow. Thank you. Hamza Binkarain. Your Honor, he, uh, waived appearance and he also retained a private attorney but wanted to go forward today anyway. So he's there. No, Your Honor. He, waved, okay. he came in, waived his appearance, and said we could proceed without him. Okay. It's a violation of probation, 20 CF 464. The issuing court, Judge Lattimore, set bond at zero. Will remain zero till next court date. Okay. Uh, turning next to Orlando Bota. Present and approaching. And, Your Honor, defense would like to be heard regarding probable cause. Okay. Ms. Esquerdo, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, regarding Mr. Bota, it appears from reading the police report that there were allegedly three inmates in total in this cell. Um, therefore, there was no um, facts provided that Mr. Bota was actually in possession of the suspected meth. Um, therefore, defense would be objecting to probable cause. Defense would be objecting based on the fact that there's no sufficient facts based on Mr. Bota actually possessing the controlled substance or constructively possessing. And in addition, no facts regarding um, his entry of the meth into the facility. State's response. Um, the state would be asking for a 24-hour reset to establish probable cause um, if the court does not find probable cause today. Okay, one moment. All right, I had the same uh, questions um, which have been raised by Ms. Esquerdo when I initially read the affidavit. I've given it a second look just to ensure that um, 
I had not omitted any material fact putting the defendant in uh, possession of the items. I, I find that the facts contain reasonable suspicion, uh, but falls just short of probable cause based upon apparent access to the location by other parties. I'm not going to do the 24 hours because I don't think it's a situation where the officer may have failed to include a fact. It's just a construction of the facts to be rendered. So um, I'll go ahead and ROR the defendant on the two charges of introduction of contraband and possession of a controlled substance. Mr. Boda, this does not mean that the state will not prosecute you for these matters. That's totally up to the state. This is just a determination based upon the loan affidavit I have before me today. So you're released on each of these today. No PC. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Felix Garcia Soto. President approaching, Your Honor. He's being removed from the cage. <laughs>